Welcome back to Emmaism Reels. This week, I'm going to discuss what you should know about Neoplatonism. So, as I was talking about before in my Plato 101 video, Platonism is characterized by its method of abstracting the finite world of forms from the infinite world of the ideal. Um, you know, where Platonism diverges from this is in the f way it seeks to locate the one, um, which is God in the finite world and temporal experience. So, Plotinus is the father of Neoplatonism. He wrote the Enneads, which is an extended investigation of how the nature of the soul um, connects to the divine. The three fundamentals of Plotinus' metaphysics are called the one, the intellect, and the soul right here. Plotinus explores what it means to be and concludes that what it means to be actually means to be in eternity. Um, with his account of Neoplatonism, he attempts to mediate between being, being one thing, versus being, being many things. Um, despite the diversity of all things, um, Neoplatonists and Plotinus conclude that they all share in the quality of being or existence. Um, a rock exists. But, you know, considering the totality of all things that exist, um, it's the unity of all things being that is unifying and not just the things in themselves being. Um, for instance, you don't exhaust the totality of being by yourself. You are, after all, an instance of being. Um, being is a truth to Plotinus. To him, the truth must be eternal and the truth is not subject to change, so it must be permanent. Um, he says that because there is permanence, there must be another realm than the physical, which Plotinus calls the realm of sensibility, also called the becoming. Um, in Neoplatonism, there is a hierarchy and the hierarchy comes from the introduction of diversity. The hierarchy is displayed right here. Um, so there's this thing called the one from which all emerges. That's the one up here, the whole gathered in perfect unity. It's the source of all things and it's not personal or personally creating. It's always outpouring and so the source of what is. Think fountain in the middle of a garden. Um, <laughs> But the one displays the original unity of all there is in manifested diversity. Um, the diversity of particular instances of being reminds us of the form it came from. For instance, if you say dog, you think dog, but that thought doesn't mean your um, image that you're thinking of contains all the properties of dogginess. Um, <laughs> you know, it's instantiated in a different way. It's an instance of being. It's not the totality of all being, but we can think of the one as being the center of a circle where the diversity are all the points around it. Um, I have it labeled right here for you if you need a you know mental picture. But the whole is gathered in perfect unity, which is a circle, yet its center is outpouring. The radius completely expands, you know, with the diversity. The further the points are, the farther the diversity is from the one. So there's this vertical hierarchy, right, like this. So it's more of a cone, you know? This is the relationship of the whole cosmos to perfect unity. The hierarchy is from the one um, to the different. It's from the spiritual to the non-material. Um, the top is the intellect, then it's life, and then finally existence. Existence is the lowest you can go. There's like a rock, then there's a dog, and then there's you, and then there's God. <laughs> Not, you know, there's stuff intermediate, but you know, you see. Um, so the intellect is more unified, and it's an elevated existence in life. The intellect always requires duality. It needs a knower and a known. The intellect is the one knowing itself. This is the unity, and it knows itself perfectly. Um, nothing that is not the one is non-hierarchical. So all the diversity is an emanation of the one. Um, within the one's hierarchy here, there is the one, the intellect, and the soul. The one is origin or God, then the intellect emerges from the one. The one's nature is emanation. Moreover, the highest unity of the one is a concentration of all being and not contained because it's dynamic in its own unity. There's no question of why with the one, it's only the question of whether with the one. Um, the intellect is logos, rationality and word. The soul is the spirit. The soul is the introduction of time into intellect. The union of mind and truth is the intellect. Um, the intellect lives in the realm of thinking which is characterized by discursive reasoning on the way to understanding. Um, now, before, <laughs> below the soul there's nature. Um, and 
you know, label it explicitly, but there's nature. Nature is an animal, it's space, extension, and it's material. Nature is um, time expressed in material. It's form with intelligibility. Um, the basis of Neoplatonism is that we can turn inwards and see which parts of us have always been the one. Um, the realm of higher being is all spiritual, which is why it's possible for us to turn inwards and see the one that persists within ourselves. Um, human perfection and happiness are indeed attainable in this Neoplatonist view in, of the world without waiting for the afterlife. Um, moreover, it's achievable through philosophical contemplation. Gotta go so a little bit ohm, think about it. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's achievable, which is why Neoplatonism is so intriguing. Um, Plotinus is interested in how the soul pours out and attains happiness. The goodness of all the finite created order is the personal dimension of love, which is understood why love in a Neoplatonist sense uh, is a connection with the divine and the piece of you that is the one. Um, so when thinking of Neoplatonism, you want to remember three things. Um, you want to understand that the one and the significance of the one is just extremely important to the foundation of Neoplatonism. And you want to understand that, you know, two, the intellect emerges from the one, and three, that all diversities emanated from the one so that there is a piece of the one in all the created order. There's a piece of the one in me, there's a piece of the one in the dog, there's a piece of the one in the rock. You know, it's just all of the created order is emanated. Um, but yeah. That's all I have for today for Neoplatonism. I hope, you know, it clarified some basic concept, concepts of this complex topic, but uh, keep up the critical thought.